When it comes to Holy Week, when it comes to the Triduum, right, the, the, these three days, Tridium, right, so the three days, there is a collection of moments in this, these last, you know, 18 hours of Christ's life where we just get an insight into how Jesus prays. Hi, my name is Father Mike Schmitz and this is Ascension Presents. Here we're watching the Son of God pray to God the Father. We're here we're watching God pray to God, but God made man pray to God. We're given this, this access and this insight into what goes beneath, what, what kind of attitude Jesus has when he approaches God the Father. And this is the attitude that we get to have. If we're adopted sons of the Father, adopted daughters of the Father, this is the attitude that we get to have when we, when we approach God. And it is summed up in so many ways in Jesus' prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane. In the Garden of Gethsemane, how does Jesus pray? He says, Abba. He says, Father. So, first of all, he calls God his Father. He calls God Abba, which is that, that again, that intimate connection. It's this, it's, it's what a child who speaks Hebrew calls their dad. And so, for us, the way we get to talk to God is we get to call God our dad. We get to call God our Father. Because why? Because he has adopted us. In truth, he has adopted us. He's made himself our dad. And so, I know for me, I maybe I mentioned this before, at one point, you know, people had said that Abba means daddy, and I've heard that that's not exactly accurate. I'm from northern Minnesota. We don't call our dads daddy. And then I remember hearing that there was this nun in Louisiana who calls God Papa, and I thought, that's good, but at the same time, it reminded me of Fievel from the movie American Tale, like, Papa! And I'm like, okay, I can't go there. I remember being in Israel and seeing this little boy run after his father. And as he was running after his father, he just said, Abba, Abba. And I remember thinking, oh, this is just what a Jewish child would call their dad. And what do I call my dad? I call my dad, Dad. And so here we get to do, we, here's what we get to do. We get to approach God, like Jesus. Here's the model of prayer. And he says, Dad, Abba, Father. He says, Dad. And so I know that when, I've, when I started doing this in my prayer, calling God the Father, what I call my dad, um, it shifted something in my heart. You know, sometimes there can be intellectual decisions we make that, that don't really necessarily automatically affect our hearts. But this was one shift that the moment I stopped, I, I included calling God Dad and, it, as well as Father, it automatically, instantly shifted something in my heart. And when I talk to God as Dad, there's something powerful. So that's number one. The second thing Jesus says, Abba Father, He says, let this cup pass from me. Now. Keep this in mind. Here is Jesus who's about to enter into his, he's, he's in his agony. He's in his passion. He's in the garden. He's sweating blood. And he's saying, let this cup pass from me. I think sometimes we approach God and we feel like or we believe that we have to tell God what we think he wants us to say. That we think sometimes approaching God that we tell him what we think he wants to hear as opposed to being honest with God. And yet here is God the Son, Jesus Christ himself, who is honest with the Father, saying, Father, let this cup pass from me. Knowing that, yes, of course, this is the reason why I came. This is the reason why the incarnation happened. This is the reason why we spent all these 33 years living among men. This is the reason why ever, all this stuff has happened for, so that he could drink this cup and so he could offer himself fully for the salvation of the world. And yet, in that moment, Jesus is still completely honest with his dad. So first, we have this intimate relationship with God, our Father, who's our dad. Secondly, secondly, Jesus is honest. His prayer is honest. And one of the things we need to do is we need to look in, in our prayer is we look into our hearts, we look into our lives, and we just get to be honest with the Father. What are the thoughts, feelings, desires of my heart? What are, what's happening in my life right now? I'm going to be honest about that. And then the third thing Jesus does is he says, yet not my will, but your will be done. And he trusts him. He trusts the father. He trusts his dad. And so first, here's this personal connection, relationship between the child and their father. This is what we get to be as well, adopted children to our adoptive father. Secondly, honesty. Just here is the reality of my life. Here's the reality of my heart. These are the thoughts, feelings, desires. Here's the fears I have. Here's the resistance I have. Here's all the brokenness in me. Second, we're honest. And third, Jesus trusts, yet not my will, but your will, be, your will be done. He surrenders himself. He trusts his dad in heaven. He trusts his father in heaven. 
And if our prayer is going to be like Jesus' prayer, it's also going to have that third element where, yep, I might not want to walk down this road. I might, want to, I might not want to carry this cross that I've been given. I might not want to be in this moment. But I do want to do the Father's will. And that's, and that's the heart of, of all sanctity. I and mean, we've talked about this again and again and again. The heart of holiness is, Father, thy will be done. The, the heaven, the song of heaven is, Father, thy will be done. And so the song of every son of the Father, every daughter of the Father is, Father, thy will be done. So if your prayer can look like this, if our prayer can conform more and more to the way Jesus prays, where he knows the relationship he has, he is, he is a child to God the Father. Secondly, he is honest with the Father. He knows he can be honest with the Father about what's inside of him. And thirdly, he knows he can trust the Father. Even if this moment is horrible, even if this moment is, is, is nonsensical, even if, the, if this moment is painful, I can trust you in this moment. And if we could conform our prayer to the prayer of Jesus, then our lives would be conformed to Jesus. Our hearts would be conformed to Jesus. And everything about us would just shout with such just power and glory to the Father that we are living like Jesus. So that's what I got today. Um, pray like Jesus with the, to the Father uh, with honesty and with trust. For all of us here to Sense Presents, my name is Father Mike. God bless.